the landscape of Western Arizona has transformed from ancient mountains to prehistoric seas to a flat, uplifted plain. Just 5.5 million years ago, the Grand Canyon was cut through this plateau. It happened so fast that geologists had to think again about the awesome power of the Colorado River. It cuts through rock not by the water wearing it away. You could pour water over rock for a long time and nothing would happen. It's the tools that the river carries. The river carries boulders and sand, and those bump against each other, and they eat away at the rock. Every day, the Colorado can carry almost 500,000 tons of rock and debris, enough material to fill more than 100 Olympic swimming pools. That is five tons every second. So investigating river erosion is never an easy task because the powerful flow of the Colorado River has scoured and washed away many of the clues that the rock detectives need. They looked for evidence in the hundreds of rapids that disrupt the river's progress. The swirling rapids are created when flash floods sweep boulders into the river from the many smaller side canyons. The river has to focus a lot of energy at these points to deal with all of the boulders that are coming in. The more coarse boulders and more resistant material that the river has to fight against to accomplish its incision, the, uh, the steeper it gets. As the water flows over the rapids, it cuts deep into the bedrock below. At this set of rapids alone, the river drops 10 feet. And there are a lot of rapids on this section of the Colorado. So it put all these rapids together in a string through Grand Canyon, and that gives you the overall sort of unusually steep uh, Grand Canyon profile of the river going through it. Gravity and simple physics are at the heart of how the Colorado has carved so much rock so quickly. But the Grand Canyon is not just steep, it's also wide. And here, on the South Rim, at the heart of the National Park, the true majesty of the Grand Canyon is revealed. This is where the canyon is at its widest, as much as 18 miles from rim to rim. This landscape appears serene now, but its unique beauty was forged by violent forces. Grand Canyon Oftentimes, we just associate it with the Colorado River. The Colorado River is what cut the Grand Canyon. It, it, it formed the initial gash to allow the river to flow across. But what makes Grand Canyon grand is really its width and all the layers of rock that are exposed. And that uh, isn't only solely tied to the Colorado River. What's happening is this rock that's exposed, it's being beaten on by rain. And the rain gets in there, and it weathers the rock, and it weakens it. And then because this is so incredibly steep, gravity will act on that material transporting it deeper down into the river, flushing it back out. And that process just repeats over and over again to allow the canyon to get wider over time. We have classic rock falls that are cascading down onto the black rock in the far distance. Those events are indications that this is actively ongoing, uh, canyon widening and retreating um, from these processes. The rock falls are merely the first step towards increasing the Grand Canyon's enormous width. Without the help of an accomplice, the entire canyon would fill up with debris. Without the Colorado River, you could not have the Grand Canyon as wide as it is. By flushing that material downstream, it, like, it wipes it all clean to allow a whole new material to build up again. And once you repeat that over and over again, it allows the canyon walls to retreat back. And the entire canyon just grows. These guys continue to march and push and move all that material downstream. The mystery of how the Grand Canyon grew so deep and so wide is being solved. The Colorado Rapids demonstrate how the steepness of the riverbed helps carve the canyon so quickly. Rock falls on the canyon walls reveal how weaker rocks rapidly widen the canyon across the plains of Arizona. 
But this is far from the end of the Grand Canyon story. In just the last million years, the canyon has been transformed by other overwhelmingly powerful natural forces. By volcanoes. This is Toroweep Point, in a remote area known as the Arizona Strip. One of the most isolated places in the continental US. Few people other than geologists ever see this area, although it boasts some of the canyon's most stunning views. The rock detectives come to see how explosive volcanic eruptions have changed the canyon in the comparatively recent geological past. This black rock that seems to have spilled over the rim of the canyon is an ancient lava flow, what was once boiling hot rock, forever frozen in time. Powell talked about a river of molten magma pouring down into a river of, of melted snow. And he talked about how dramatic it must have been, the boiling and seething and the steam. And, and uh, it, it must have been amazing. You, you would picture red hot um, lava like you would see in Hawaii pouring down the canyon walls and coating them. And then once it reached the river, it would uh, you know, it would immediately uh, create just giant clouds of steam. The extensive lava flows erupting from as many as 100 cinder cone volcanoes had a dramatic effect on the Colorado River running below. Crow believes that on at least eight occasions, the volcanic eruptions created huge lava dams that blocked the river completely. Well, behind me here is, is one of many basalt remnants. Um, they're the remains of lava flows that poured down the canyon, partially filling it. And then subsequently, the Colorado uh, River has, has removed all but a few little chunks. The lava dams brought even the powerful Colorado River to a halt for a while. In time, the dams were no match for the Colorado. The rising pressure of the dammed river behind them eventually became too much, and they shattered. This explosive episode has left its mark on the canyon's walls. Today, the cones appear to be extinct and lifeless although some geologists believe that the volcanoes might not be finished quite yet. The last eruption that sent lava pouring into Grand Canyon probably occurred uh, about 100,000 years ago. There is evidence for a, uh, an eruption on the, on the rim that didn't actually make it into Grand Canyon that's 1,000 years old. So there's, uh, there's you know, I think a, a good chance that, that in the future there may be eruptions here as well. 